a highly qualified visionary leader, and he or she will be held accountable to do their job well, well by all. It should be a matter of highest priority for us that the term of the Secretary General be revised before the election in 2016. In order for the United Nations to do its job more effectively, we need our Secretary General to discharge his duties with moral authority, integrity, and courage. And we need a general, a Secretary General who is strong and uncompromised. And in this sense, he or she should be concerned with campaigning, he shouldn't be concerned with campaigning, re-election favorites, or undue promises. The President of the General Assembly, since um, do, um, paragraph 35 uh, requests the President of the General Assembly and the Security Council to, to start the process of soliciting candidates. We will play a role in the process, regardless of what, uh, what happens uh, at the UN level. So we believe that states should consult with parliaments and the wider public on nominations. One for Seven Billion began work two years ago, focusing mainly on making progress at the UN on this issue. And now we are launching the uh, next phase of our campaign, which is all about starting a global conversation about what kind of person we want to have in this important role. The resolution adopted by the General Assembly uh, two weeks ago was extremely encouraging, and we are very, very grateful to the ACT Group for, for its leadership. With my UNA UK hat on, I also want to commend the UK for, for its efforts. Having a member of the P5 speak out in favor of a better process has given us a real boost. We think anyone worth appointing should be keen to engage with their most important constituency, the world's seven billion people. We need your support. Without it, we won't be able to shine a spotlight on candidates' records or monitor whether states are putting pressure on them and putting into practice what they have decided to do. Um, the role of the Secretary General of the United Nations uh, has become one of the most important world leaders uh, in the international legal order. It is uh, our uh, great uh, appreciation that the General Assembly, uh, after 69 years, has taken the decisions to uh, dramatically improve, make the, the process more transparent, uh, nomination and qualification based, and, and to try and seek the highest quali qualified candidates in the world. And again, we will be coming back uh, with the proposals uh, that were deferred in the resolution adopted on September 11th on the issue of uh, changing the term, which presently is a five-year term that can be renewed to a single term of longer term, say, of seven years or so. Whether the P5 will still uh, veto the decisions or the, the, the recommendations of the General Assembly, we'll have to see. But we have to work towards uh, not letting this happen. And uh, uh, what gives me optimism, as I said, is that the P5 members were unanimously behind the resolution that, that has been adopted on the, on the 11th of September. So it's the first time that that we can have optimism about this issue for 70 years. This issue, because we are coming from Eastern European countries or so region, whatever. For what we're going to be seeing over the next 14 months or so, I get the impression from what Natalie is saying is that there's going to be... Uh, in his letter to Anka and other uh, journalists covering the United Nations, how crucial your role is uh, this year to try and inform yourself, inform your editors, uh, and, and, uh, and the broader media. Two candidates from the same country. Uh, and we, all, we can think of one country that might present two. Uh, and then, since you're considering a woman, will Eastern Europe be the region Mr. Jorgensen, uh, will Eastern Europe be the region? But definitely the principle should, be, should apply to, to the different post. Yes, please. If you could identify yourself, please. Hi, yeah, James Reinald from Al Jazeera. And to see that the, the best possible candidate will, will be uh, aired, that will be heard, uh, the, we welcome also the cooperation between the governments and civil society. 
but uh, we have to not to close our eyes also about the the situation we are in, the the, the problems we are facing, uh, and some of them really are not easy to solve. And well, for our side, I don't know that we're intending to do it as, as jamboree. I think uh, civil society will say you get five or six different uh, candidates from uh, either one or two regions or four or five regions, uh, there will be diversity of support. Uh, some of the candidates may have particular expertise uh, on one issue that certain groups like, et cetera. But the point is, is that uh, in the past, we've very rarely been able to know who are the candidates, what are their qualifications. Um, it was only in 1946 when the General Assembly itself decided to say it would be better, preferable, in that post-war period for the Security Council to offer one candidate. That's, that's the root of it. So there's nothing legally in stopping the Security Council from presenting more than one candidate. So it's possible, and it has a lot of support. There are, I think, about two-thirds at least of the UN's membership. Um, if, you, if you go on our website, we've got all the, the positions there. With, I, I guess, media briefings and interviews and assessments and so on about their uh, character and their, whether or not they're worthy for the job. Um, at the same time as the P5 are going to be selecting the person they perceive as, I guess, most... But, but uh, as we know, they don't want to do so. They, they want to submit only one candidate, uh, but this debate should definitely remain, and, and we... Um, uh, it, there was s some significant efforts made in the 2006. Um, we also, uh, just to reiterate, we're very pleased that groups like uh, the elders, 